Warning, this video may contain extremely frustrating installation instructions and is for experienced developers only. It's advised that you install using Cloud9 to avoid needless pain and anger. All right, if you're still here after the stern warning, I'll talk about how to install MySQL on Windows. Of course, remember, you will probably run into some sort of issue depending on your computer and what you have installed already. It can be difficult. So that's why I really, really, really recommend that you use Cloud9, skip Windows until the end of the course. Okay, that's enough from a broken record. Let's get started. So to install MySQL on a PC, we need to go to mysql.com and then click on the download section and then click on community. And under community, you can actually click on any of these. If you click on download, what it's going to suggest for you if you're a Windows user is that you actually use the MySQL installer rather than downloading things individually. Basically, it's a package that will help install a bunch of MySQL things all at once that you may or may not use, that you may or may not need. Make sure that you have the correct version selected depending on your architecture, then click download. And it looks like it starts downloading, but it actually doesn't. You have to click another button at the bottom, no thanks, just start my download. And then I'll fast forward through this. It takes a little bit to download depending on your internet, but then once it's done, all we wanna do is open it up run the installer. Okay, so then we have a couple options. We're going to select developer default and then click next. And then depending on what you have installed on your computer, you may need to actually install some other requirements. So I did here. So I basically had to go through a couple times, double click, click execute, wait for something else to go install, in this case, Visual C++. Uh, and then I had to repeat that a couple of different times. Now that will probably be different for you and your machine. But then once that finishes, click on execute again, and this will actually start the installation process. So there's a bunch of components installing, but once they're complete, click next, and then we move on to configuration. And all we really care about is configuring the server. So we'll click next again, basically click next another time, we don't need to change anything, and further another time, click next. Okay, so we're now at the point where we need to decide on a root password for MySQL. So you can decide on whatever you'd like. I just chose password, the word password. It's not a good password, but I want to make it simple, easy to remember. So you type it in twice, tells me that it's weak. And then I'm also going to add a user here. You don't have to do this. Um, I'm just gonna make one with the name Colt and also the password will be password. And then confirm the password, also tells me that it's weak and I'll click okay. So really all that you need to do is remember whatever password you typed for the root and then click next and then we'll click next one more time. And then finally, again, we'll click execute and it will start to apply the configuration and it may take a moment or two, but then once it finishes, everything should be installed. So we'll click finish and then get out of here. So that's how we install. The Next important thing is starting up the command line client, which you can find just under MySQL command line client, click on it, and then you'll need to enter your root password, which in my case was password. And now we're able to actually type some code something like show databases, which we haven't talked about, but you can type code in there. You can also try typing things that aren't SQL and you'll see you get error messages, but all that we really need to care about is that we have the command line client up and running and we can type stuff into it. 